Good morning from Lille. Uh, thank you for coming to our uh, briefing uh, about the assets in uh, our database. Uh, we are very happy that we have uh, quite a number of you uh, from uh, different countries. Uh, in general, uh, there were 16 of you who registered uh, from uh, 15 or uh, 14 different countries, so thanks a lot for, for this interest. Uh, I'm very happy to be here uh, with Petra uh, Geithner. Good morning, um, everyone. Also from my <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, as we want to discuss not only the assets in the database that are related to communication purposes, but also uh, the financial information uh, that uh, <coughs> might be very useful and uh, important for you. So, before we start, uh, so as I already mentioned, uh, I'm here with Petra, uh, and this is our little agenda. Uh, we'll be here for about one hour. I think that should be just enough for us to present all the different assets and how you can use them. Uh, so in the first part, we'll talk about the financial needs and then uh, in the later part about the data that can be useful for the communication needs that you might have. Of course, after each session uh, or section, we want you to ask questions. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, let's have a quick look at the tool that we are using. Uh, I think that many of you have already used it before at the other webinars, just in case you haven't. Uh, if you have a look on the right-hand side, you have a small uh, menu with a number of things uh, that can help you to uh, engage with us as much as possible. In case you have trouble with sound, there is one tab called audio, so there you can test it uh, and check whether everything, uh, all the settings are correct. Um, there you can also see a very important tab called questions where you can type your questions uh, and we will take them and reply to them as soon as we finish our little demonstration. Um, you can also raise your hand. Uh, we did it in the last uh, uh, webinar, so in case you have a microphone available uh, with your computer and you want to ask your question directly, just don't hesitate uh, to raise your hand uh, and ask uh, directly, kind of communicate, interact with us uh, directly. Uh, so I think uh, that's that much is uh, for the tool, and I think uh, we can um, go almost directly uh, to our content. But uh, before uh, we get to the specifics uh, of the data that are available in our database, maybe uh, let's um, mention um, quickly why we are actually holding uh, this webinar for you. We are very happy uh, that we managed uh, to develop quite a long set of different statistics uh, for you, for your use, uh, to simplify your work, uh, to make your life easier or life of your colleagues from your institutions. We are receiving time-to-time uh, uh, -time requests uh, either directly from you or from your colleagues uh, for financial data, for uh, suggestions, uh, for stories and projects, numbers of projects, uh, um, for your needs, either financial or communication. Uh, and we know that very often you are under time pressure or your colleagues are under time pressure and we cannot very often uh, reply uh, in a very speedy manner. Um, so we think uh, that with this little training, with this little demonstration, we can give you the useful tools uh, in your hands uh, so then you can easily find the data, pass it to your colleagues, or uh, quickly just have a look, analyze it, take what you need, and use it uh, for whatever is necessary in your institution. So, uh, I think with that, uh, I, can, uh, I can just uh, stop and uh, pass the floor uh, to Petra, uh, and we can directly probably get into the financial information in database. So, Petra, what do you have uh, to say to our uh, country representatives? Okay. Well, um, I noticed that we, um, um, when we receive different requests from different member states, that in the end, they are nevertheless quite similar. So I went through these different tables, which we are often asked to fill in. And um, I try now in the next uh, uh, slides, in the next minutes, to um, show you a bit what are the typical requests we get and how the data can then be found to, um, for, to answer to these requests. 
I hope that then uh, what I have seen in, the, in some tables from a few countries also reflects what you probably need um, for your specific request. Should it not be the case, of course, you have here the question option to raise a question here. Um, otherwise, you're of course very much welcome to come back to me or any of the other finance colleagues anytime. So let's get started. Usually um, the tables start with the question of the program um, budget. So um, for this it's relatively easy because at least this doesn't change <laughs> um, at all over the program lifetime. So the reference document here is the cooperation program. Um, where um, there is the financing plan where you can see the different priority axes um, and um, while well, the first four of them are the thematic um, objectives that you are aware of and the fifth one is technical assistance. Um, some ask also what's the situation for the platforms. For this I think it's important to bear in mind that the platforms are considered as a project so they are part of priority one to four. So when you have to fill in a table, I think the first question to ask is um, what data do you want there um, to appear? Do you want to limit yourself to the projects only? Then the project budget is 322 million euro spread across four priorities. Do you want to include also the platforms? Because as I said before, they are part of our financing plan, part of the first four priorities. If you want to include the platforms also, then it's 337 million euro that is available for the projects. If you also want to um, include technical assistance because you want to have a follow-up of the overall program budget, then you have to add another 22 million euro and then the total indirect euro budget is 359 million euro. So that's the first choice to be made and um, then if you um, uh, um, want to have then the uh, to know what is the budget available against which you want to monitor um, then um, you find the figures here on the slide or you go back to the root document which is the cooperation program. Okay so this is really just the basic overview of the financing. And the good news is it doesn't change so at <laughs> least this figure <laughs> you fill it in once and then you don't have to update it again. Then usually um, member state representatives ask us um, on the project partner budget and that's um, the first time where it's necessary to enter into IDB. First of all, of course, here it's important that you have access. I don't know, Petra, you yeah. might know more about it. Uh, what are, what's our situation there? <laughs> so you, when you kind of go to the uh, website of uh, our database, uh, this is the login page uh, that you see. Uh, you put your email, your password. Uh, if you forget your password, just click on forget your password. If you've never been to IDB, you need to register. And then it's up to our IT officer here uh, in Lille uh, to give you that access. Uh, so once you log in, uh, this is what uh, you see. You can see that this is a test system because uh, I asked our IT officer Alexander to adapt it so that you really see what you as country representatives uh, see because we have plenty of, uh, well not plenty, but uh, additional uh, things uh, for managing uh, the database uh, which uh, um, are really would be just too much uh, for, for, for you to use. So what is the most important, uh, I think, uh, then is really to go to the tools because the tools are the key here, we, we are discussing here uh, today. So I think I can close project mm -hmm. and then just <coughs> pass the floor again to Petra to demonstrate how to use our tables, our statistics for the financial needs. Okay, then you go to tools, you go to statistics and you update project partners if you want to be sure that you have the situation really of today. I will not do it now because we don't want, don't want to lose time on this. It's not very long, but still it can be like 30 seconds that it's uh, loading. Then you download the table. You set the filters. And then um, we sometimes have member states that would like to see the um, um, the total amount of submitted applications but usually the majority of you would just like to focus on the approved projects so the first thing would then be to go to this column approved projects the column e and to select just the approved projects by selecting yes then you are sure you only have those projects that actually um, fulfilled 
any conditions and um, are properly approved. So now we, we have the projects of the first to the third call in this selection. Then people um, often would like to make a choice. They don't want to see everyone's um, uh, project partners, but they make then a selection by country code. For example, France is frequently asking us um, for tables to be filled, so they would select France and then um, would just see the project partners from their um, uh, uh, country. Sometimes, especially in bigger countries or federal countries like Germany, they would not only like to see the partners in their um, country, but in addition, they would like to focus on a certain nuts region. So, I recently had a request from a German representative. This person chose Germany, and then this post person chose Sachsen-Anhalt, and then he could see what's the budget or the allocated funds to partners from his region. And you can also see the numbers of partners for these regions. Exactly. If you want to see the number of partners for these regions, um, it's um, you have to use a little workaround um, because what you see here is, for example, the same project. Of course, um, if there are several partners from the same country in the same project, the same project will appear several times. So if you want to be sure to only count the number of projects that are in your region, you go to partner role and you only select the lead partners. And then we know now for Sachsen-Anhalt that there are two partners involved in Interregio, um, that there are two, uh, sorry, that Sachsen-Anhalt is involved in two projects, um, two Interregio projects. Uh, no, that there are two lead, the two projects led by Sachsen-Anhalt. Yes, uh, yeah. yeah, indeed, sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Petra, for paying attention. Um, because what I was thinking about, and maybe this I should also demonstrate, let me go back and we unfilter here. If we want to count the number of partners for Germany, we now have 68 partners from Germany. And if you want to count the number of lead partners, we would count here, we would choose the advisory lead partners and the lead partners because we have two types of lead partners. We filter here and now we know from the German partners there are nine of them that are also lead partners. So that's for counting the number of partners. I will unfilter again here. Now we have again all German partners. And then if you scroll a bit to the right, you actually arrive at the funding part and here you find the ERDF funding and then you scroll to the very end of the table, you put a sum, maybe good to format slightly so that it's easier to read and then you see that 12.6 million ERDF is going to the German partners, to 68 German partners. As I know that John is watching as well, I will also point <laughs> out for the Norwegian funding, there's a separate column of this, this um, um, where then you can see for the Norwegian partners how much Norwegian funding they are getting. Um, let me see, what other filter options do we have? So I said we can filter by partner state, we can filter by the NUTS region, um, we can filter by um, the partner role, so if you want to count the lead partners or how many total partners you have. We can also filter by the partner from to date because there might have been partners that dropped out. So you might want to exclude um, those partners that are not no longer active. If you just want to see the active partners, um, you should look at this column specifically and exclude those that are no longer active. For example, 
they must have been a German partner that left in 2018, so it's no longer active. All the others have an end date, 2020-21 or 22-23, it means they are all still active. Some also would like to know by call. I recently received the request, what is the um, funding committed to the third call? There, you would select third call. And if you want to know it for the program as a whole, then you have to unfilter again. The country selection. We go back to column A, B which is here. We just have a little issue with the viewing here. You Where did I click on? <laughs> yes, so, <now> it's better. <laughs> so 69 million were allocated during the third call to German partners. To no, um, the whole, uh, ah. all partners. So the two projects under the third call, 69 million euro were committed or almost 70 million euro. Don't be surprised, especially for those of you that are also MC members and um, that might also go back to MC documents. Maybe in the MC document um, at that time we had said um, that the commitment was um, 72 million, for example, roundabout. Um, and now you see that it's only 69.7 million. These um, figures slightly change and go down, mainly because of, um, first of all, all the fulfillment of conditions during which um, there are often also budget conditions that they had to fulfill. Then also there are partnership changes and especially in a partner, uh, in the case of a partner dropout, the amount also um, reduces. So um, uh, it means also if maybe six months ago you have checked for the figure committed to Interreg Euro projects and you know in the meanwhile no further call has been approved, still it might be good to double check again if the figure has been reduced um, or not because each time we have a partnership change usually it also has an impact and the figures usually go further down. So it's always good to double check yes. uh, these in figures the are latest, stable. yeah, in this latest project partner stable Indeed. whether the number changed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes partner states would also like to know um, the amount per priority. So for this also you have the option here to um, uh, filter by specific objective. In fact, in our um, uh, application form, um, the projects have to f um, fill in directly the specific ob objective. They don't have the reasoning by priority. But you will easily see that um, there are always one or two specific objectives that correspond to the same priority. So if I want to see the projects um, belonging to the first priority, I would select here and then I have all partners from the third call for priority one. I'm checking my notes. Um, <laughs> sometimes people are also interested to have a distinction by um, legal status and that's where you can play here a little bit if you want to see the non-profit partners for example or if you even want to check by a certain partner type, how many regional public authorities have I involved um, from my region, how much funding goes to them, you can further play with these two columns. And I think that's about so maybe the main we can things. yeah we can check whether we have any questions uh, related to this. Uh, so yeah, Helena is asking. Uh, I hope I'm not mistaken when you apply a filter to column and then create a sum of the remaining numbers. Excel will also include the numbers that you filtered out into the sum. This means you have to copy paste the filtered results into an extra sheet. Uh, only then create a sum separately. Am I right? Okay. To this be is... honest, <laughs> this is probably to be tested. Uh, uh, I am not aware of it. I think if you really filter uh, it takes only what you filtered. Uh, that's my knowledge. Uh, but uh, maybe to be really, really sure, uh, it's good to test. Can I click this uh, away? Uh, so maybe, maybe we can we can double check uh, and test it and see whether. Let's see if I understood yeah. correctly. But um, you saw that I had created here. Yeah. A subtotal. And each time I do a new filter, the sub subtotal automatically updates. Yeah. So this usually, uh, this subtotal only shows you 
and you see it even here in the function that is uh, um, displayed here, um, the, um, the total of the selection you have made. Yeah. So all the other rows that are in between but not visible are not taken into consideration. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, okay, I see now that you are talking about subtotal, not sum. Uh, it is automatically, uh, yeah. in a way, how Excel is taking the sum. Uh, by just kind of clicking on auto sum, it's taking kind of subtotal of the column uh, as you filter it. Uh, so here I think it might be a good idea to really keep an eye on where the filters are so that you actually know what this number means. Uh, but uh, yeah, it is also a little bit for you to play around and, and see um, uh, what you need and uh, uh, whether the numbers make sense in a way, just, just to double I mean, check. <laughs> it's true that uh, Excel is a tricky tool, but here mm -hmm. I find it relatively um, intelligent and secure because and it automatically understands what you want and uh, puts, even if you want to put a sum function, automatically it will put the subtotal function. Yeah. And no matter how long your selection is, it will always update the figure and um, put the subtotal in the long, last row. So yeah. it's pretty so, safe. So I think using this, this function at the top called mm -hmm. AutoSum and just clicking on it when you go to the, um, the first cell below mm -hmm. your, your filtered uh, column uh, should, should take care of this. Yes, and okay. the good thing is if you make further selections, you don't have to uh, go again to the last row. Automatically, it will put the subtotal there. Yeah, good. Okay. So that's great. Um, I don't see any other questions, but if you have uh, any additional questions, please type them in or raise your hand. Uh, we will be we are ready uh, to to take them and try to clarify and help uh, uh, with demonstration where you can find the data that you are looking for. Uh, so, Petra, what else do we have? <laughs> okay. So far, we talked about um, budget. I think now. We should go to the actual expenditure because the project partner table, this has always existed. This is probably not a big novelty uh, for you yet. What is really the novelty is that we have developed another table, which is expenditure by partner. And um, because now that we are actually spending 20% of the EIDF, EIDF have already been spent, um, you um, have certainly an interest in comparing um, the budgeted figures against the actually spent figures in your region by your partners. So for this, you go here, you update again um, to have the latest, uh, uh, the most recent version, and then you download. Maybe in the meanwhile, I'll close also the other one. Might so wait a little bit so that it doesn't block. <laughs> Sometimes Excel is playing with yeah, us. And it's, there's also a lot of calculations done by the database in the background, mm, so yeah. it can take sometimes a little bit, but this one doesn't want to close. Okay, well, let's, we won't, don't want to save here. That's why I didn't want to close. And now we go again to enable editing. And We set the filters again. So what you see now is the um, payments by partner by project. So what you see here is the CDETA project from the first call. Here you see the priority and the specific objective. Um, and you see the partner number. And if the same partner appears here four times, it is because this partner has reported already four times to, into, uh, to our program. And here then comes the second partner with all the progress reports. So there is a line by partner by progress report. So this project has, I don't know, eight, project, uh, eight part partners and four progress reports submitted. So you have about 32 lines um, for the same project. Um, so what you then see here is the ERDF funding paid to the partner. And you also see the partner, uh, wait a minute, Norwegian funding. 
and again you have several options to filter if you want to select by a specific country so we go back to my German example you choose you just want to see the German partners you can choose again a certain nuts region we could go again filter by Sachsen-Anhalt for example as I did before and then you can filter again by the partner role in the project, although this is, uh, happens less often on this level. You could, and then what is also important to bear in mind, that there is a payment date. This might be also interesting for your first level controllers or approbation bodies to see um, when payments have been done. And the first thing is to unfilter the blanks here. This is quite important because then you only see the payments actually done. If you don't unfilter, you also see the payments that have been um, that are not yet done but amounts that have already been reported to us but usually what is really important for you is um, to only look at the expenditure actually accepted by the secretariat and paid by the certifying authority so that's why the first step should always be to um, unfilter the blinks here um, otherwise of course, then the rest is very similar to what you have seen in the partner table. You find also some additional information here and that might be also of interest to you. So, do you also find here the amount rejected by a first level controller. Sometimes um, approbation bodies or the centralized first level controllers would like to draw statistics. How much expenditure was rejected by first level controllers? Um, and that's, for example, here for Germany now. Uh, wait a minute, I forgot to pay attention to the column, column Z. You can set the sum. So for all the German partners, having reported so far 74,000 euro had been rejected by the first level controllers and in the end accepted by the first level controllers that's the column AA a bit of formatting to make the readability better so, so far 3.8 million have been um, paid to German partners and um, this, the amu this amount is the final accepted amount. But initially the German partners had reported 74,000 euro or 74,850 more. Um, so something around uh, 3.8 million and this amount was rejected by the first level controllers and this then finally led to this amount being accepted. So this is of course the amount excluding the corrections and these are the corrections that were done previously. Sometimes people are interested in such statistics as well to see how much is corrected. Of course then you can debate how much does it actually reveal? Is it very good if my um, controllers uh, correct a lot or is it not good? Um, this is very difficult. It can be a sign of overly strict first level controllers, very picky. It can also be a sign that some project partners haven't understood properly the rules yet. So um, this figure I would always say has to be handled with great care not to draw too easily um, conclusions from this. Um, I wouldn't say just because the figure is um, um, big that the first level controller did a great job. It can also be a sign of uh, too strict control, for example. Mm. It has to be analyzed further, okay. as all figures usually. Yeah. Maybe we can again have a look whether there are any specific questions related to this. I'm also checking uh, what else is, ah yeah, if also some more information afterwards. I okay, think. maybe, yeah, uh, we have two questions probably related to this. So Francesca is asking, maybe it would be helpful to have another version of this file showing only the accumulated expenditure, that is the last submitted PR, since in this version it becomes difficult to make sums per column. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and maybe, uh, yeah, okay, let's first maybe deal with this question and then uh, move to what uh, Mira... We can, we can even uh, okay. you this question. Okay, so Mira's asking then, payment date means payment of the program to the lead partner? Indeed. In the database, I start with Mira's question as it's a very <laughs> easy one. Uh, both are, let's say, easy questions. But um, for the payment date, so of course in the database, we only have the database, uh, uh, we only have the date of the payment to the lead partner. We don't know um, when the lead partner then actually paid the project partners because this is no longer in our um, scope of monitoring. Mm. Um, but roughly, I think the lead partners, um, we usually say lead partners should pay the project partners within four weeks. So if you see a payment date here and four weeks later a partner calls you and says, I still haven't received the money from my lead partner, mm. uh, you can already judge if a lead partner is exaggerating or if it's normal because the lead partner just received the funds yesterday, you cannot expect it to be today mm. on the partner account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it gives you, I think, a rough indication nevertheless in case you receive calls like this. Um, um, where's my money? So apart from statistics, this can actually help in replying to some partners yes. being concerned that maybe their payment hasn't come yet. So here you exactly. can check when the payment uh, has been done. And okay. you can see who's actually yeah. <laughs> exaggerating or not. Um, mm -hmm. Then the next question was, how can I see um, the total? Uh, the amounts here are per progress report individually. So there is no problem. You can simply um, do a sum. If I want to know what the Interreg Euro program has paid so far to all partners in all projects, I would simply set no filters at all. I would go to column AA. I would go to the bottom of it. Maybe I can make it set. Here, this one. Oh, yeah, I already have a sum, but it's so long that it doesn't have any. Uh, it's super difficult to read. Commas, uh, <laughs> At the very bottom of the table in the green line, you have average, count, and sum, but the sum is a little difficult to read because it's really, really uh, a long number. So without the dividers, it's just a little difficult to. It's just that I don't have here um, the scroll bar. Um, I don't know how I can. Ah, now it's visible. You? <laughs> it's a little now long it's table. Easier. Yeah. I'll make it like this. So, 76 million, almost 77 million have been paid out so yeah. far. Uh, I'm just wondering uh, whether what Francesca meant wasn't that per partner you always have four different sums. Uh, and you know that her idea mm -hmm. was to have it cumulative per partner. You know that it's not by progress report, by more that to partner this sum was uh, paid. Uh, that's uh, that was my understanding of Francesca's question. Uh, but then uh, I also see that uh, this table helps uh, in seeing when they were paid out. Like if this this amount was paid in the first progress report, this mm -hmm. amount for the second. Uh, and then maybe just by oh. kind of highlighting the four, again, it gives you the sum mm -hmm. at the bottom of the table. Uh, so if you look at Excel and you highlight certain cells at the very bottom, you again mm -hmm. see kind of the basic uh, statistics uh, that you usually look for. So that might be helpful, but of course, with copy pasting, it uh, it's difficult to say whether this this is a way to do it. Um, <coughs> of course, yeah. what we do here is we provide provide a, a, a mega table that <laughs> hopefully satisfies a maximum of needs. Yeah. Um, so far, I haven't come across the need to actually know for specific or for the partners to know the total reported so far. Mm. Usually, it's a sum of all partners reported so far and that's easily possible with this table mm. and if you want to know the sum of um, the, the total reported so far for one specific partner you can then use the technique Petra just showed um, you just highlight the four reports of that particular partner yeah. and then the sum is um, shown. So I hope this replied to two questions both by Francesca and uh, Mira and now Dan uh, has a question uh, mm -hmm maybe show again how to make a pivot sheet. Uh, it helps a lot. Um, okay, so, so far what Petra uh, was showing was not really using the pivot tables, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe uh, maybe I can very quickly uh, try to show from, from where we are now. So what we have, uh, 
is uh, I'm just probably going to make it oops a little smaller. Oh, okay, this is this thing that. Okay, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so now we can play with it a little bit better. So if you are in a table and you have it uh, all formatted and, and looks all nice, you have here in Excel the possibility of inserting uh, something. So here you have a pivot table. Of course, in each of your languages, uh, the text in Excel is a little different. But when you click on this, it first asks you whether you want to work with the whole file that you have available. Uh, always make sure that uh, the pivot table opens in a new uh, worksheet because you don't want to have something on the side of this source table. So if you kind of select this, you saw that it the Excel did it automatically for you. So just click yes. And here it's up to you to select what you actually want. <laughs> so for example, if you are interested uh, to have first a filter by country because you are interested only in people uh, or partners from your own country. So you put in filters the uh, partner country. Then uh, what you have to be careful about, and this is something that Petra mentioned, that the, contrib the payments, um, we have to be careful that we do not include payments that have not been paid yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's, it's this ERDF paid by partner and here we need to be careful that we get rid of the zeros. So that's uh, yeah, either the zero or we have the blanks. Uh, and no, I think you have to include the payment date. Because the ah, it was in the payment date. Oh, yes. sorry, sorry. So then, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not working with this table <laughs> that much. So there was the payment or date. Or still relatively okay. new. <laughs> so this one we can put as a value because this we will mm -hmm. be very interested in. But the payment date will be for us the filter because we need to get rid of the blanks. Mm -hmm. So we have the blanks right here. We get rid of them. So we have all the dates here. But it will show us only the sum that uh, actually has been paid out. So as it was then asking, let's take Romania. So for example, we take Romania here, okay. And this is actually the amount, and again, you, you, can, uh, you can format it either the way Petra showed, or there is also this little possibility here on the side that already kind of gives you even a little a euro at the, on the side. So 2,606,000 has been paid so far to Romania. If you want to play with it even further, and for example, you want the regions, uh, like by which regions you used it, you can use, for example, NAFS2 regions on the side, and here you say in each region how much has been paid. So I hope that this is just one possibility, how you can create a pivot table, and here you will mm -hmm. have an overview of payments by region in Romania. So I think this uh, this might also be useful. Of mm -hmm. course, is if you do something like this, uh, always save it. <laughs> uh, the more you have pivot tables, the heavier uh, the table uh, becomes because there is a lot of calculation uh, behind. So then you can keep it for yourself and and, and use it for whatever uh, needs uh, you have it. So I hope this uh, this, this replied to Dan's uh, question. Uh, so I think that that's so far. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I have a few more. Then yes, yeah, I'll pass. Uh, I'll pass. I'll pass the floor back to Petra. So we are back in the expenditure uh, table. So Petra, floor is yours. <laughs> um, regarding the priorities, um, just to remind you then that um, the five priorities are automatically included. So you have T A in here as well. If you don't want to see. TA because you just want to compare against the project uh, budget, priority one to priority four, you would unfilter TA and you would exclude the TA figures. You also have in here the platform. So um, to be honest, what is the best way to filter this? Uh, you could search by France, but you can also look by the name of the organization. Uh, I don't know if you called it managing you authority. Can type it here, but I'm not sure about how it's called. 
me spontaneously neither. I didn't check it before. <laughs> mm, it's not. Uh, it is. Uh, wait a minute. We go first of all to France. It's not that you have to do it like this. It's just that I then know better. We still have no Pat Calais here. And then I'll find out what it is called. It should be. Why was the platform unfiltered? Okay, I guess this is something I have to double check and come back to you, but normally they are in. I will search for it and give you feedback on that one. So no, um, then another point, um, so for the platform, sorry, I don't have the solution right now how to unfilter the platform, but I'll look into it and mm. I'll give you feedback on that. Then another point of information that is maybe important is that you also have here the first level controller's name and the FLC organization. So if you uh, want to know also in addition who has checked a particular report and refused a certain amount, for example, you can find here the name of the FLC organization. You can also see what kind type, uh, what type of control this controller has actually carried out, um, if it was an on-the-spot check or if it was a desk-based check. Don't be surprised if you see some blanks here. It's when it's related to um, the first progress report because you have to remind or remember that um, for the first progress report, the partner reporting section wasn't ready yet in the um, database system. So um, it, uh, the controller um, still had to upload in paper the control um, uh, report uh, in the system. So the names are not directly in the system. That's why it cannot be exploited in the statistics. So these blanks are explained by the fact that the partner section wasn't ready at the same at the time and we didn't record the name. If you want to know a specific uh, controller, you would have to look directly in the system. Mm. But from progress report 2 onwards, you find all the names listed here and you can then also have an overview who did what for which partner. Mm. Okay. Great. So I guess that much uh, for uh, your financial needs. Uh, I again have a very quick look whether we received any additional questions? No, so that's good. Uh, okay, so now uh, let's move uh, to other tables that we have. Uh, so again, we don't need to save this one, uh, but I'll go back uh, to our database. And here in the database, uh, you can see apart from the financial, uh, from the financial tools, uh, we have some statistics or overview tables that can be very useful for you when you are looking for um, uh, results for some of the first achievements. And either it could be in numbers uh, or it could be in stories, what we've received from the projects. And here we have two tables that can be of uh, great use to you. One of them is called the achievement overview and the second is the policy instrument results. So. You go about it the same way as Petra was saying, always make sure that you first update. Don't be surprised if it takes a little bit of time, especially with the bigger tables like the project partners table, it, it does take a little bit of time to really take all the most up-to-date data. Once you have it updated, download the most recent version. So if with the achievements, let's have a just very quick look what this table offers to you. So we again enable editing and you can see that this table um, is by project. It's not by partner. All the partners are in this one table, which maybe is not super, super useful, but we are looking at achievements and results really per project. Uh, what the project achieved, what are the cumulative uh, indicators here of their achievements. So you have, apart from the acronym, apart from, well, you can uh, search by the um, um, specific objective, by calls. Here, uh, if uh, you are interested only in uh, partners or in um, projects where your country is involved, you can again start by filtering 
and if you click on the filter, uh, you don't have to go through all the different options and variations and combinations of your partner uh, countries, but you can just type. So, for example, if I type Austria, uh, I have all the possibilities of Austria and I get only partners, only projects with Austria. Um, you see here the number of the latest uh, progress report that was approved, meaning that the data that, she, that follow have already been approved. And here in the first sheet, because in this table, and this is a little specific, this table has two sheets for you ready. So in the first one, you have all the numbers. So all the numbers of outputs that our projects are reporting to us, meaning number of events, number of good practices that they identified, number of people of increased capacity, uh, number of action plans that they developed. So all these outputs, they tell us and they are cumulative in this table based on the progress report. If there are zeros, uh, for example, with the number of increased capacity, there is a zero until the last progress report in phase one. It's only in phase one at the end when all projects are collecting this number. So until then, it is a zero. Once they report at the end of phase one, this uh, indicator is filled in. The same applies to the action plans. So the first section, the blue section, those are the outputs. That's what they generated during their project uh, activities. And then the green section are achievements. So here you can look at what kind of changes have already happened. And this is something that will mainly happen during phase two, but there are already things happening during phase one of projects. So you can have a look whether any structural funds were influenced. And here you have zero or one. So if you have a look at those who claimed, yes, one was changed. So here we do have an example of a project who, so Project Perfect, said that they already influenced a structural fund. Uh, and then in the other table <laughs> that we will open later, you can have a, a, have a look at the story uh, behind this change. So, and this happened already uh, during uh, the phase one uh, project, but it's been accepted. The same uh, for other instruments, meaning other regional policies. Uh, they, again, this project says that already one of them was influenced. So you can filter by whatever interests you in terms of numbers. So if you will be looking at numbers. By the way, here in the filter, just as you put filters, you can then clear all the filters because sometimes that Excel also uh, doesn't help. Uh, uh, it keeps some filters and then you end up uh, receiving results uh, that are not accurate. So clear the filter is another quite useful function of Excel. Uh, now let's have a look at the second sheet of this table. And this is uh, a sheet uh, full of stories, if Excel lets me, yes. Um, we have in our progress report uh, section that is calling storytelling. And there we encourage our projects to share with us things they are proud of in their progress report. So just as we have payments for progress report, the storytelling is also linked to progress reports. And for each progress report, you have a story for a project. It's not... Um, an obligatory section for the projects, but we encourage them to tell us what are some of the things they are proud of. So if you are preparing uh, a publication or if you are looking for something interesting to say about Interreg uh, Europe uh, uh, projects, you can again, under the information about partnership, uh, search by your country, have a look, uh, search in the stories, but then it's up to you to really read it and look for a specific story. We cannot guarantee that all these stories are the best uh, ever. We do not filter them. We do not delete those that we find maybe just mediocre or maybe too technical. But some of them are certainly uh, nice and might be a useful source for you if you are looking for a story. So apart from this, what projects are proud of, they sometimes tell us uh, what are some of the other achievements in their projects. So it's this, this, this field here. Uh, and if I put a filter here, uh, sorry, 
just jumping around. I hope you will not have well, kind of seasickness <laughs> because of this. So you see that there are some stories already already shared with us. Uh, so I don't know uh, someone, for example. Uh, let's okay. Let's have a look at some of the. So they have some unexpected insight. It partnered with something. Then we have something in in the Netherlands. So you have various stories uh, that were unexpected. And you might find something of interest uh, in this section. And then we also ask our projects to tell us how they are interacting with the policy learning platform and how they are participating in their activities. Sometimes it's really just a very brief sentence. Sometimes it's broader. So again, if you are to explain to other beneficiaries what the platforms are doing, uh, having a look at this might be of help uh, because you can say how the projects uh, are interacting uh, with the platform. So this table is mainly for achievements in numbers, that's the first sheet, or stories that the projects share with us because they are proud of them. So that's one of the uh, tables. If I go back to uh, the database. So that was the achievements overview. That's where we have the two sheets. And then there is the policy instrument results table. And this is something that was popping up for us uh, from the very beginning because I opened it because I had some trouble opening it uh, from, from, from the tool. So this is another table, but here we focus on policy instruments. So for each policy instrument, we know uh, what kind of policy instrument it is. Again, we know what progress uh, report uh, is related to what was reported. And then at the very end, you have a description. If it was influenced, how it was influenced, and what was the territorial impact. So this might be of a great use if there are, and we are receiving more and more information about how policy instruments are being improved. So those are really the key results for us, I would say, and a great resource for you of stories of changes that are happening uh, thanks to the project. You have here the possibility again to filter because under the policy instrument you have either yes or no. <laughs> so just taking all the yes and checking what uh, happened for each instrument uh, is the way to filter it. Of course it's by country because it's a policy instrument and each policy instrument is linked to a country and a region sometimes. Some in very seldom, I think it's on the national level. So you can filter it by country, you can filter it uh, by topic at the very beginning because it's the project that kind of uh, is linked to the instrument. So plenty of ways of filtering and then finding what the specific results in policy instruments have already taken place. So I guess uh, that's really in a nutshell, very quickly, um, uh, the overview of something that could be of use to you when you are looking for stories. So not financial, uh, it's stories. Uh, um, you can uh, also that communicate about finances. Of good course. Spending, but uh, of not course, sure. the results is actually more interesting <laughs> yes, and yes. more revealing. <laughs> so uh, I don't know whether you have any questions uh, about uh, this kind of data uh, and whether you find this also useful, uh, whether you think that this uh, is a source uh, uh, that um, might be of help uh, when you are looking uh, for, for something to you need to communicate uh, about our program. Um, it's more text-based, uh, of course. Uh, uh, it needs uh, a little more searching, uh, maybe even keywords. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, we, we hope uh, that this will be certainly uh, another another element for you uh, to look at and look for. Um, so uh, I guess I don't think we have any additional questions about it. If you do, please type them in. We still have about five minutes. Uh, I will uh, maybe, maybe in the meantime uh, go back to our uh, little presentation uh, and then go very quickly to some additional, uh, additional tools uh, that we have. Uh, so here uh, you can, uh, you can, oops, 
you can see that apart from the tables, uh, we have uh, the approved projects page on the website where you can go by topics. Of course, we have the country overview on your country specific pages where you already have things, uh, meaning good practices, projects, already grouped by your country. So you can look for them on the website. Now we have the good practice database that is again searchable by country. So you can go there and search by country, look for specific good practices that might be of use. Uh, we have the facts and figures uh, page uh, where also as a subsection you have the infographic about the policy instruments. But there it's about the policy instruments that our projects are working on. Not yet that were improved. We didn't get that far yet. Uh, but it's with, only starting. I think so, yes. Uh, I think as soon as the <laughs> results will be coming more and more, we'll try to turn it into an infographic that will be of use to you as well. And then, uh, as uh, last year, uh, we published this little study uh, from 4C. We have the project results page that we will be updating with uh, the current results uh, that we have. Uh, but as soon as any update happens, uh, we'll inform you about it uh, and uh, we hope it'll be of use to you as well. Uh, in the meantime, I'll have a look. Uh, we have uh, one additional question. So Francesca is asking, from this table about results, could we make a pivot table showing the percentage of improved policy instruments over the total of them? Hmm. Um, in the Remaining time, we can have a look <laughs> and give it a try. Uh, so if I go to the results table, I, I, I believe that you meant the, uh, the, the policy instruments, uh, how many of them uh, have been uh, improved. Um, so I think here for the pivot table, it might be a little tricky with the first line. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let's let's have a look what 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 it does. But no, it's it Excel is very smart as you see. It wow. skipped the first line and really outlined the whole table only with the columns as they are uh, named. So yes, uh, let's say we want this, uh, and what we want. Um, is because here policy instrument it pr improved uh, yes no so maybe this is the yes no that we want to use and then maybe we can use country on the side uh, so yes no and what we can put in uh, maybe as an index uh, so here you actually do see uh, from the different countries how many instruments. We can do it maybe by acronyms, uh, by uh, projects, uh, uh, because here the numbers might be a little misleading, uh, because for example in Austria you have only let's say seven uh, structural funds programs, but because our projects are addressing uh, one structural fund program several times, mm -hmm. this count can several count times. several times. So this might be a little tricky uh, per country, uh, especially with some smaller countries like Estonia, where I think uh, you have only one uh, or two uh, structural funds program. So this might be a little misleading. It's so, more an occurrence than yeah, yeah, uh, a number of instruments. Exactly. Uh, still kind of having this, keeping this in mind, uh, you can have a look how many from the plan, from the targeted, meaning from the total, have already been done. Mm -hmm. So you can find a percentage uh, for your country uh, about this. But please keep in mind that these numbers, these total numbers, are not total numbers of your instruments that exist, but more the total number of mm -hmm. how many projects are actually addressing your instruments. So keeping this in mind, uh, it can be done. And then, of course, you can, you can find a percentage by simple, uh, simple, uh, simple uh, uh, kind of, Vision, yeah. yeah, kind of, yeah, you, you do four, divide it by this, and then you get your percentage, and this is so, we can say, well, that's a little too much, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it is about 20%.
It is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, so this is this is a pivot table. So you can see you can do it. Maybe, as I said, uh, you might filter by countries and then go by project acronyms. Uh, that might uh, provide uh, some uh, results uh, or some overview that might be of uh, use to you. Uh, let's have a look uh, whether there is anything additional. Uh, no. So, um, well. We are just on time, I would say. I also think in general, when you have any, um, if you notice that any information is missing, really get back to us. Yes. Either we can help you and tell you how to find it, or we can also see um, to which extent another column can be added in the table. Yeah. The budget for the database is um, it's not endless, but um, usually these, if the data is available in the database, it's not so difficult and costly to edit also in the statistics. So especially if there are more frequent uh, of these, uh, there are more frequent requests for the same data. Yeah. We then also take care to add it to this table to answer to a maximum of needs. Yes, yes. So please, uh, yeah, I, I can only repeat mm -hmm. <laughs> what Petra said. Play around with what uh, you have learned today. Uh, see what uh, works for you, what still uh, might be improved. Uh, let us know if you have additional questions uh, and maybe you didn't follow exactly what we've done. Uh, just uh, get back to me, Petra, uh, uh, and we try to help you or explain maybe again. Uh, this is being recorded, so we will put it online for you, so you can review it uh, if you want to. Uh, if you have a colleague uh, who didn't have a chance uh, maybe to watch it with you, again, you can share uh, the recording uh, with that person and uh, hopefully uh, it'll help. It'll help you to work with the data and find it uh, promptly and as you need it. Uh, and maybe just very, very final note, uh, as you are our contact points, uh, 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 just uh, to, to remind you that we have our next meeting that will be face-to-face -face on the 27th of March, just after the MC in Romania. Uh, we'll be sending you agenda uh, or the draft agenda very soon. Uh, and uh, I was sending you uh, some update uh, via email uh, recently, so uh, your feedback would be very much appreciated for further shaping the agenda and what we'll be discussing. So, uh, thanks a lot. Thanks uh, a lot for being here with Thank us uh, for one hour. Uh, we hope uh, this was of use. Uh, we'll have a little survey popping up as soon as we close uh, this webinar, so please uh, let us know what you think. Uh, and also there is a comment field, question field, so if you have a question that uh, you are not sure you should ask for everybody, please uh, leave it there for us uh, and we'll certainly get back to you. So. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being with us. Uh, and uh, we wish you both a very good day. So, And see you soon. <laughs> see you soon. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye.